All right, in this video, we're going to start off by making some customizations to our copy of FM Starting Point. I'm going to go ahead and fire this up. And I can make all the changes to this that I want without worried about damaging it because once I'm done with it, I'm just going to throw it away. I notice I'm down to one record. So now that we have our disposable copy of FM Starting Point, we want to add two fields. The fields are going to be the number of employees for the organization and also the annual revenue for the organization. We haven't talked too much about the structure of the database except back early on when we talked about it in kind of broad strokes, but now is as good a time as any. Now first off, we're in the contacts data entry screen and if we go back to layout mode, we know that we were in the table TO5 contacts. So we know that pretty much that we talked about the idea of that we want to organize like groups of information together. If we know that we want to add the fields to contacts, then we probably need to go to the contacts table and add the fields there. Now we're in layout mode. I can click here and go manage database. Now by default, the system already knew that we were in contacts and it sent us to the table contacts. Now if we were somewhere else, we could always jump back to contacts to this table. These are all the fields already set up in contacts. And we can add our own. Now you can look through these if you want, but restrain yourself from changing them unless you have a specific plan or you know what you're doing, because you could break something. Of course, if this is a throwaway copy of FM starting point, then no big deal. So what two fields did we have to define? We had to define number of employees. So we have number of employees. So we're typing the field name right here. Now what type of field is it? Text field, number field, date, time, timestamp, container. All these are the options we have. Now real simple, tax is the most flexible option that there is. We can type almost anything in there. A number field is restricted to a single number. We can't put a paragraph of text in there, or a time, or a date, anything like that. It has to be a number. Same for a date. It's exactly what it sounds like. Same for a time. A timestamp is actually a date and a time in a specific format. A container is a simple block where we can drop in a Word document, or PDF, or photograph, or a movie, or anything in there, and it stores it. We can't really search on it. We can't really sort on it but it's there for digital document storage. It's pretty slick. Now calculation is where FileMaker can do some math for us. It might be able to calculate the amount of tax on an invoice or something like that. And summary is where FileMaker could run all the totals of all the invoices and give us a summary at the bottom of a list view. Maybe the total for the quarter or total for the year. So for the number of employees, I'm just gonna make that a number field right here. I could put a comment here if I thought it needed a comment, but the description, number of employees, seems pretty straightforward. I'm going to click Create, and it puts it up here in the list. Now, the list is currently being sorted by the name of the field. I could click by type. All the fields are grouped by type. I like alphabetical field name. It keeps things simple that way. We also need annual revenue for organization. And that's definitely a number because it'll be money. Now we don't have a money field in here because all money is is a kind of number. In fact, it says formatting. In fact, it could be a dollar, it could be pounds, it could be rubles, it could be anything. But when defining a field, is this going to be a number? I'm going to say create right here. So we've added both fields here. We can still cancel right now and none of the changes will take effect. But once we hit OK, these changes will be committed and there's no undo at this point. Now these two fields have been added. Depending upon how we have FileMaker set up, sometimes those fields will be added down at the bottom of our screen down here. Now right now we have that option turned off so those fields are not being added at the bottom of the screen. Given that, we need to decide where we're going to put these fields. The screen's pretty full already, but we have some options. We could stick them in here, or we could stick one of them right here, but that's still pretty tight. We could look around here, 
addresses is pretty empty. So let's plan on sticking them in here. So we're in layout mode. We're in this tab. Now we're clicking the tabs here just like we would. And when we click on a tab, we're only interacting with that object just in that tab. Now I clicked right here. If I drag, I'm moving that whole tab. That's bad. So I'm going to press Command Z to undo to move it back to where it was. I'm going to go and click up here under Arrange and select Lock. That locks that object so I can't accidentally move it. So if I try to move it, it won't move. That's really handy. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these items right here. Now I can move them. That makes sense. But what I want to do is actually move this secondary address right here. And I want to move it down under here. But I need to make a little room first. So I'm going to grab this section right here and move it up. Then I'm going to grab this section right here and move this across. Now I could get rid of these if I thought I wasn't going to use them. Now FileMaker does a pretty good job of trying to automatically align this. So I can see I've got generally pretty good alignment there. So now I want to put these fields in over here that I've got. So I'm going to grab this tool right here where I can just grab and drag a field down here. Now I'm on this tab, this address tab right here. I'm going to drag it down here. I'm going to find the field that I wanted to add. So it's annual revenue for organization. Okay, there we go right there. And then I'm going to grab another field right here. I'm going to bring it down here. And that was the number of employees, right? And so I go down. I, I'm using my wheel on my mouse to scroll. Number of employees. So there we go. To get things to align correctly, I can use the, actually the cursor keys. I'm pressing my cursor keys over here a little bit. And I can get them to align. I can move them down. I can do whatever I want to do. Right? It's up to uh, you to figure out the alignment and whatnot. Now the question gets into, well, the number of employees is one thing, right? But the annual revenue, that's a financial number thing, right? How do we handle that? Over here we get into data formatting, right, in this section over here. Now, how do we want that to be formatted? Well, it needs to be formatted as currency, right? And, of course, this will take on different symbols and things like that for your currency, uh, wherever you're at. I'm here in North America, so that's going to be uh, U.S. dollars, at least where I'm at here. So I'm going to say fixed number of decimals, two. Do not display if it's zero. That's an option. That's fine. And so I'm pretty much set. I don't have to worry about Japanese at all. That's cool where I'm at. And so I can go back to browse mode now. I'm going to say exit back to browse mode. And um, I still have this thing over here where it says addresses, but I can click in here, annual revenue. And uh, now, of course, it's missing the comma there. So we could go back there and turn that on. And then I could say 24 employees and they only make $12,000. So they're all really broke. Maybe it's a startup company. So you get the idea that that's how that works. Now, the font there is really small, so you might want to make that larger. In fact, it's really small, so you might want to make that a whole lot larger and then work on making the formatting uh, nicer, that type of thing. But you get the idea of how this works. Um, you can also add the uh, comma separator. Use thousand separator right there. That's for the comma. Turn that on. That'll make it nicer. Make this bigger. Make both these fields bigger so they kind of match, right? The other thing is, is the tab, the tab, the tab, the tab. We want to customize the name of the tab, but I double click it. We can't change it because we locked it. So we have to click on this tab panel over here. We have to go to, to arrange. We have to say unlock. Then we can double click it again. We say go to addresses and we can give it a different name. We can say miscellaneous info or whatever we want to say. Now we just don't say OK. It's really important. If I just say OK, it's still called addresses. What you actually have to do is you have to give it a different name and you actually have to click the rename in here. Um, very important. Then it takes on the name. In fact, I can actually also change the position of it if I want. I could move it up to the top position if I wanted to. I could also set the default. Right here is the default front tab, which one is the most important tab. We could say that the miscellaneous info is the default. It's so important that we want that to be the front. So the default does not have to be this front one. It could be any of them. could be the default. So back to browse mode. In this case, I do have the front one being the default. I've got my comma separator in there. We've added fields. So we're, uh, we're rolling right along. So we've added fields. We did a little bit of formatting, at least to the currency. Now, if we click in there, you actually see the actual number I put in there. When you click out, you get the window dressing of the formatting for the number. 
But that's this FileMaker formatting it for you, making you feel good. But it's actually a real number, and that's the number right there.